All right, hey guys, we are going to learn how to draw tie-dye. So this is basically a fake tie-dye that we use markers. So you'll need paper and some markers. I use three colors. You can use more than that, but um, I think three colors is enough to where it won't get too mixed up together. Um, so first, you start off with making a squiggle, kind of the same shape that tie-dye makes and then and then you take your next color and you just keep making swirls next to it then you want to leave a little space so that you can draw your like little lines Last but not least, the blue. So I would suggest starting with your lightest color first. So that's my yellow. Um, that way your markers don't get all like mixed up and the colors don't get too muted. So basically you just kind of follow the squiggly line and make little like up and down um, strokes and you kind of want to keep the going around you can make some short some long and that kind of gives it that natural uh, tie-dye look so that you know it's not going to be perfect but I mean tie-dye isn't really perfect either whenever you do it it's kind of a surprise when you um um undo your t-shirt or whatever you're tie dyeing so you kind of just want to freehand it and keep moving along but as you move outward you want to have longer strokes and you can always go back in and fix it if you need to fix anything. So next I'm gonna do pink because my darkest color is blue. And I'm gonna kinda take my pink and I'm gonna overlap it with the yellow to show that they're, you know, how the, the good tie-dye look is. You don't want to leave any white spaces. Then you get a little orange going. Why you shut the door? Go. Okay. So yeah, you just keep wanna have irregular strokes, so not all the same you can kind of go in and make some longer ones but basically just up and down motions and like i said as it moves outward from the center of the spiral you want them the strokes to get longer. Because that's kind of how tie dye looks. And then, uh, oh, I missed this part. Um, what me and Miss Natasha learned is that the smaller the paper, the better. Because when it's too big, it kind of loses the effect that you want it to have. See that white space there? I can always go back in and 
fill that in with different colors. But basically, we're just doing the same thing. And basically there you have it. So once you finish up, you can kind of go back in and uh, cover up those white spaces that you might have missed. But other than that, um, pretty much good to go. But you want to, big thing is you want to make sure that your lines overlap to have that good blend going so that it really shows the effect of the tie-dye.